My name is Luis Ball. I'm a senior software engineer with ImageX, and today I'm going to be talking to you about AI-powered image transformations. So we've all become accustomed to seeing things like this, seeing stable diffusion, doing incredible things, creating something from nothing, visualizing entire worlds in the blink of an eye. But online businesses face a different challenge. Images are our most valuable assets. They're the first line of defense to our products. They're how people imagine using our products for the first time. What if we could harness the power of AI, the power of this creativity, and apply it to our most important assets, to our images? Well, then we could do things like increasing the resolution of our older content automatically by upscaling it. We could do things like removing backgrounds that are distracting uh, or just don't match our size design and replacing them with something that allows us to create uniform product pages. We could do things like generate tags that are theme and object aware, ensuring that we can group, search, and filter for content that is highly relevant. This is the power of AI-driven image processing. It simplifies these complex transformations and allows them, us to do them quickly and easily. It automates those workflows so we can apply these transformations like automatic facial detection and cropping, like upscaling, like background removal, and have them happen across all the images on our site where they're needed automatically. And maybe best of all, it lets us have a, a better customer experience, ensuring that our images always look great and are highly relevant to what's on the page. Now this sounds easy, but building this out is very difficult and time consuming, which is why ImageX has AI powered transformations as part of its offering. For things like smart image tagging, where we identify objects and themes in an image, helping us search and organize and filter our assets more easily. Thinking of an example, let's say we have an e-commerce camera landing page and we want to find all the assets that have a camera on them and display them. Maybe we're having a sale. Using smart image tagging, we can easily discover the assets in question and build out this page quickly. We can do things like risky content detection and alerts thanks to smart image tagging, where risky content is automatically tagged and detected and allows you to be filter it out to have a safe, legal, and friendly online environment and remove any brand unsafe images. Thinking again about our e-commerce store, imagine if they, we have a lot of user-generated images. Maybe they're listing out the content that they want to sell. We can automatically filter out that content by detecting and flagging this risky content and just filtering it out. ImageX allows you to do things like intelligent image cropping. So this allows you to focus on what's most important about your image every time, enhancing its visual appeal and making image responsiveness easy. So thinking about a new e-commerce site that maybe wants to release a brand new dress, you can automatically crop and center this object on what's most important about the image. Moving on, we can do things like background removal and replacement. So we want these consistent product pages and we want to be able to customize these product pages to fit a region or a site design. So thinking about that e-commerce page, maybe we want to remove the stack room, but distracting backgrounds from user generated content, or maybe we just want to match our site's design better, even if the backgrounds do look good. With automatic background removal and replacement, we can do this. And this is new to ImageX. We're super excited to be talking about this super resolution. We can enhance lower resolution content and upscale it so that it always looks its best. Maybe best of all, we could do this at scale across all of your images that maybe need this kind of enhancement. So thinking about again an example, e-commerce site has a lot of user generated content. Maybe they took the pictures with an old camera with super resolution, it doesn't matter. The pictures can always look good next to the other content on your page. But that's enough talking about AI powered image transformation. Let's actually play with it. Uh, on an uh, example e-commerce store. Let's take a look. So let's imagine I've got this little uh, used goods store. Um, we've got some cameras, some hats, some sneakers, uh, and all these images uh, are just being served straight from where they're stored. They're of different shapes and sizes and resolutions. Um, let's take a look at how the page performs. Let's do a hard refresh. It takes about 61 milliseconds, not bad, but we're on Wi-Fi. What happens if we switch this up and we go to uh, LTE speeds? Still pretty fast. Uh, you can see some loading time here. Uh, increased to about 
under three seconds. Um, we've got you know, a little under six megabytes of, of images being transferred. I think we could do this better. I, um, it's good. The images look great, but clearly there's some savings we could do in terms of load times. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Here's our image tag. Uh, we know we have ImageX images, uh, so we could go in here and start setting uh, you know, width equals 400 and things like that uh, to crop the images uh, in the source itself, but we want to do that let's because uh, then we have to go in here and do a source set attribute manually as well and things get complicated so instead i'm going to comment out this image tag i'm going to open up here and i'm going to comment in this imagex uh, react component um, and obviously you pick the component that best suits whatever framework you're working in but here we're using react um we're going to do the same thing we did above in the image tag we have a source we have an alt attribute a width and height We've got our CSS classes, and uh, now we're going to add a couple of ImageX parameters to this image. We're going to crop the image, and we're going to uh, auto format and compress. Um, auto format will just pick the best um, image format for the browser uh, in question. All right, so again, taking a look before we save, we've got uh, 3.8 megabytes, about 2.95 seconds of load times. Let's save that and do a hard refresh. So now we transferred uh, a little, uh, now we transferred a lot less and we loaded in 1.5 seconds. So almost half the time. Uh, so already huge improvement just by uh, cropping these images. And, you know, if you can open one of these up, you can see they're all that 400 by 400 size. Um, they're no longer of different varying sizes like they were before. So uh, I think we could do better. Let's go ahead and see what we can improve on here. I don't love the centering of this image. The hat's getting cropped there. Uh, this hat's kind of far away. And the shoes have some very distracting color backgrounds. So let's fix all of these. We're going to go ahead and go with the camera first. So I want to center that camera and maybe make it a little bigger. Let's see how we could do that. Um, we can try by just using the crop param. So we're going to say crop faces and edges. Uh, what this does is we're going to tell ImageX, hey, what we want is you to crop the image 400 by 400, but try to leave the face in the frame. And if there's no faces, then leave the edges in the frame. And what that is is any kind of object that our uh, AI uh, capabilities detect. Um, so now if we go over here and we do a hard refresh, we can see that the camera is centered, the hat's no longer being cropped off. Things generally look more in the frame uh, as we'd expect them to. But things still aren't perfect. This camera's still a little too small. This hat's still too far away. Let's see if we can tackle some of this stuff. So uh, let's add some one-off parameters to each product. So let's find that camera that's a little off-center. Oh, there's why. The image uh, itself, the camera was off-center. We can fix this, so let's add some parameters here. We're going to add the fit crop parameter, um, but we're going to set the crop to be a focal point. Uh, focal point should be exactly horizontally halfway through the image, but vertically slightly below uh, the center. And we're going to increase the focal point zoom to be, let's say, 1.5. Here we should be able to see if we remember to include the product parameters in our image tag. We should be able to see the image zoom for us. There it is. It's nice and big. Um, so that looks great. Uh, let's see what else. All right, that hat is still kind of far away. Let's use some of the uh, ImageX AI facial recognition to fix that. Now, where is that wicker hat? Here it is. It's a large image, but the hat's kind of far from the yeah, subject itself, it's kind of far from from the camera. So you can fix that a little bit by doing uh, a fit face area. And we'll do some padding as well because what face area does, it says fill the frame with the face in the image. Uh, and face padding will say, well, we don't want to just, just, just the face. Let's, let's add some padding because we want to be able to see the hat. So let's save that. There we go. Now the hat's much better in frame. Things are looking great, but I think we could do one thing even better and that's Let's normalize these backgrounds. I want this to match our design spec, uh, which is gray backgrounds. And that's 
easy to do. We can use the BG Remove AI parameter. We'll save. Nice. And now all the images have a consistent background.